I've raced all over the Midwest. Look at that, she opens the door, Van Anhausen takes the lead. But now I'm traveling further than I've ever gone. To race in a series I've never experienced. Really good hook out of those necks and tires. On a track that doesn't even exist yet. I'm Chris Van Nelson, and Nexon Tire is sending me to be the first pro spec driver to race on the West Coast. These Nexon Tires, these ATXs, were absolutely hooked up that whole track, so an absolute blast of a race. This is the road to Hammers. So we got home from Hammers about two and a half weeks ago, and we took a little bit of time to decompress, but we want to share our story with you. It was one heck of a trip. Yeah, I would say it's... Uh lifetime trip for sure obviously i want to try to keep going back we first got there late on friday night you saw that in episode five but the fun really started on saturday we got to watch the class 11s race it was like 70 degrees we were carrying around our jackets our sweatshirts it was it's beautiful that's how we thought the whole week was gonna be <laughs> yeah had we known no saturday was cool it was fun to watch the land rush start of the class 11s that was neat to see that yeah sunday sunday was a change sunday we woke up it was it was a nice day yeah it was um, beautiful dog was outside running around in our little camp area yep then it quickly changed we had to practice late at night yeah our practice was scheduled between like what thing? five to five to ten but then i didn't get out on track until 11 30. yeah 11 30 which is obviously California time so back home in Wisconsin it was 1 30 in the morning yeah so we just finished practice it has been a day it's currently a little after midnight California time which puts us at about two o'clock in the morning central time um, and we just walked in and started you know kind of getting ready for bed um, it it has been probably 40s and 25 mile per hour sustained winds. We are tired, we're hungry, we are sunburnt, windburnt, and ready for bed. On the track, I was uh, I was thinking that going over the, the big tabletop, good thing we didn't get that much air off of it, because I'm pretty sure it would have moved us over. How did practice go yesterday? It was cold and windy. Um, we had like, what, 25 mile an hour winds sustained, I think, and then like gusts of 60 mile an hour, so that was crazy. Uh, it was like 40 some degrees, which was weird for Southern California, I think. Maybe not. But anyways, um, practice was okay. Uh, I got stuck behind a, kind of a slower, <laughs> slower guy for a bit. Um, then got around him and got about a, a lap and a half of closer to full speed in, and that was really about it. So I think I'm just gonna use this qualifying as more of a, a practice than anything, because we're gonna be starting at back, um, just because of running a pro spec with pro lights, we'll let them run in front. I'll start in back, and then, you know, if we catch up to them, we catch up to them. Which tires did you decide to go with? Uh, we went with the ATXs. Um, the initial thought was maybe, because it's so sandy, that we'd go with uh, MTX, but after looking at the track, I'm glad we started with the ATXs. There's a couple corners that actually are like hard pack, almost blue groove clay, which is surprising for being out in the middle of a desert, but it gripped up. I, I had fun in a couple of the corners. We were really lucky too, because we were able to leave the truck over at the Weller's Pits, because we were over in Laser Town. It was over a mile away. Yeah. And having to drive the truck back with no headlights was really risky. Thankfully, they let us keep the truck by them. Yeah, that was really, really nice of them to allow that. And because they were busy, they were super busy all weekend. So for us to take up a spot in their pit area was very, we're very appreciative of them for, for allowing that to happen. And when you got back from practice, you had been running without the bedsides on. So in the wind, in the cold, in the sand blowing, you still had to put the bedsides back on. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was uh, Sunday night. And then Monday morning, woke up bright and early to go and do qualifying. Qualifying. How did it go? What was it like? Uh, so we could see the full track today because it was not at 11 o'clock at night. It went well. I wish I had a little more time on track, but overall I had a blast. The track is super fun. 
very technical. The corners are tight, but they flow really well. And you have a mix of uh, really sandy. You have like really good hard pack, grippy um, track. And then you got some loamy stuff, but then like in the far back section, it's very sandy and ruts up, but it's kind of fun, it's trickier. You just gotta be smart about driving through it. And then there's like my favorite corner that I have that I have there is the second to last corner. It's a super banked tight corner. I think Corey Weller called it the white corner because it's all like super white. Um, just from whatever, whatever's on that, I don't know. It's just hard packed sand almost, but it is essentially looks like you're, you're on cement. You go into it and you just point the front of the truck where you want to go and the whole the back of the truck's up so it's just like the coolest feeling ever and you can just you can rip around that corner my favorite corner was the turn two so turn one was uh right hander 180 and then turn two was like as you were rotating out of turn one you'd rotate left and every single time you would just put your nose right on the inside of that and hook around and you got a good pass there the downfall was the spotter's tower was right there and the V8s would just kick up rocks like crazy to the point where race control put up plywood so they weren't getting hit with rocks during the race. Yeah, the um, that corner itself was, was interesting too because not only that, but it was, a, it was a dip. A lot of these corners were dug into the ground. You were like riding on top of the surface and then every corner you're, you're dug in. I mean, some of the ruts at the end of the race were up to my like opening on my door which is nuts so during the race starting from the back row was pretty interesting it was actually really nice to be able to sit back and watch how the track was kind of forming how the other drivers were interacting with each other and just take a lot of mental notes more or less the best part of that was seeing who's competing against who who's running who and how they're running each other right away i caught up quickly to couple of the pro lights and just kind of stuck with them for most of the race yeah you were running in fifth for a while yeah. and then uh two in front of you had issues yeah so the track was pretty different from what we're used to in the midwest it was sandy but it was in some areas very hard packed in other areas it was super super loamy where it would just fall apart right away and, and frankly i i like that i think more tracks need to be like that, where instead of just being wide open every single time, you have to really be on your game and know how to get through a corner like that quickly. I think that's part of the reason that you did so well against the pro lights is because it wasn't just about power. It was about driving intelligently. It was about cornering properly. Um, it was about reading that track and being able to adjust your driving because the beginning of the race was very different from the end of the race. Oh yeah, yeah, that was, that was, complete change of track complete difference so every single lap you went around the track was different i think the the craziest part of it to me though which you couldn't see on the live stream or, or anything else was that that time that we were racing was i think five o'clock at night there and the sun was directly in my eyes and i was going to bring sunglasses and put it under my helmet but i didn't thinking i'd be fine so I'm sitting there driving, trying to shift, trying to do all this stuff, holding a hand in front to try and block the sun. And at one point it was so blinding because of the dust in front that it was just like point and shoot and hope you hit the right, the, the right corner the right way. I mean, I think the other part that, you know, people don't know if they weren't there is you raced half that race without a spotter. Oh yeah. During one of the corners, I think it was when I actually pulled the tear off. I ripped it off and then I hit my my pumper as well as my connection for my earbuds. So I'm sitting there like starting to fog up. So I had to crack my windshield and I didn't hear anything from Amanda who was my spotter. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And then finally, after I got done with the race, cause there's just too much going on too quick. I think there was a lap and a half left that I was like that, maybe two laps. So I plugged it back in after I got done and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got fourth. And Amanda's like, no, go to podium. You finished third. I'm like, nah, -uh. no I had, way. <laughs> I had been giving him this huge spiel about how he better be so proud of himself. He just podium against pro lights. We're at King of Hammers and he's going to take his truck up onto the box. And all of a sudden I just hear 
click. Amanda, do you copy? <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? And he's like, that was fourth, right? And he's driving away to tech. And I was like, no, that was third. You need to go to podium. Get up here. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was, it was, that was funny. It was kind of the perfect, like, end to, to that. It was chaos, but also hilarious at the same time. Yes. But the cool thing is, I don't know if we've actually talked about this, is the Pro Lights have 200 horsepower more, over 200 horsepower more than, than the Pro Spec has. They have a little more weight, but they have a lot more power. So it was really cool to be able to compete with them. It was obvious in straightaways to see where they would pull away, um, just with more power. But other than that, I, I feel like the, the truck being nimble and having less power in the corners was actually, I think, beneficial. Granted, I'm not in a pro light. I, I don't know what it was like racing that in a pro light. That's just my speculation. So there, it was cool just to overall uh, be able to compete and represent the, for the Midwest. I think what was really cool too is... Our friends, our family, our fans blew up the live stream. And Scott Rain came running over afterwards to tell you about it. Yeah, that was neat. He came over and he was like, I think like 60% or 60 people. What I don't know what, what, he, what stat he gave me. It was, I think it was like 60% of the people on the live stream were all cheering for you and rooting you on. So He's like, that was the most viewership we had all day. So that's awesome. So thank you to everybody for that. All my family, friends, everybody fans thank you for for supporting us and and being a part of this i don't uh, think um i don't think that lee was expecting you to podium either no so that's a funny story so going through tech i was talking with lee and introduced myself and he you know super nice guy lee perfect the race director who runs all of gas and great guy very accommodating so we were running through tech and Lee came over, introduced himself, and, and I asked him the question. So, Lee, what happens if I, like, pass somebody? Do I have to fall back at the halfway mark, or what do I have to do? It's like, no, just, you know, go ahead. Like, move, go, go forward, don't worry about it. And then I'm like, all right, so joking around, too. I was like, so what if I get on podium? What do I do? He's like, well, I guess go in front. Like, they should be faster than you. So I don't think he was actually expecting the prospect to be running up with the pro lights. I could be wrong, and hopefully, Lee, if you're watching this, um, you can correct me, and I won't be offended. But we went up to podium, or I went up to podium, and he came over, and he's like, so here's what's going to happen. We don't actually have a trophy for the pro spec, but we're going to give you a trophy, and we'll, we'll make you one, but we're going to give you a different trophy, and when you're interviewed, hold on to it, but then you're going to have to give it back because it was, I think I grabbed one for like a 1600 unlimited, unlimited like desert buggy i think is what it was <laughs> so um so yeah waiting on a trophy yep it was so but, funny yeah, yeah. as we were you know bench racing later with the rep from nexon that we work with he's like chris where's your trophy <laughs> and chris is like oh that wasn't my trophy he's like i legitimately thought you forgot it up there <laughs> I, I put it back i had to put it back like <laughs> it felt weird like oh, i have this trophy in my hand but then i had to put it back after i drove off the the podium which by the way we should be doing this in the Midwest for every race. Driving your truck onto a podium is way cooler than walking up to a podium and then being interviewed, you know, that way. Yes. But being interviewed in front of your vehicle, because that's so much better for representation for the sponsors on your truck. You can talk about it. It's it's a way cooler experience as a driver, too. Yeah. And so. for fans, it takes the truck and the driver and it makes them synonymous. I feel like in our sport, a lot of people don't recognize, like, there's a person in the truck or they see the person, but they don't don't really know the race side yeah. of it you know it really kind of solidifies that bond between the two right i agree i totally agree it was neat to do that and uh again you know just a quick shout out again to lee thank you for everything and being accommodating and, and having us out there we were excited to be out there to race i was i mean i raced you guys didn't race but <laughs> <laughs> i was very excited to to go and race and be a part of it once we got the racing out of the way, Tuesday and the rest of the week was really our time to work with Nexon, who mm -hmm. had gotten us out there. Tuesday, I brought the truck down to the Nexon booth. It was awesome to have Nexon there and be able to put the truck um, to see, okay, these are the tires that they're selling. Oh, this guy races on the same tires that 
I can put on my Forerunner or my Tacoma, uh, whatever truck you have, especially the ATX or the MTX, mm -hmm. or just have that like brand recognition. You know, here's a truck, here's the brand. This is what it's all about. As I, part of our Nexon, you know, deal being out there though, we were there with other Nexon drivers, so we were able to watch the other Nexon drivers compete in the Ultra Four races, and then they pulled us all together so that we could have a photo shoot. Yeah, that was neat to just see all the different vehicles that Nexon had backed. You're a part of a motorsports team at that point. I thought it was neat to be able to do it. After we got, you know, our work out of the way, racing, photo shoots, stuff like that, we were really able to relax and take it all in. Hi, EJ. How do you feel about the weather today? Grilling. Making some ribs. Relaxing. We had never spectated King of the Hammers or really anything like that before. Never been to King of the Hammers, so we had no idea what it was like. Yeah, we were guessing. Fortunately, we brought a UTV out to cruise around in, which is an absolute necessity to spectate. You're driving multiple miles, so it's not like short course where you can watch the whole race. For us, it was neat to be able to go through the desert, kind of the adventure of finding your way to where you have to spectate and, and looking at the maps where everybody is, the live timing to see who you want to see come through. So that was really just a cool experience to really figure out, I guess. Yeah, we started out spectating over at Chocolate Thunder, mm -hmm. watched some of that, saw a pretty spectacular rollover and save there. Yeah, that was neat. We moved over to the hammer side. We saw Sledge and Jack. Mm -hmm. And then our last day spectating, we spent at Turkey Claw, which I think that was my favorite part spectating. Yeah, I would say that was one of the coolest ways to wrap up the, the whole trip out there. It was where a lot of the passes really happened were in the rock because that's one thing we never realized. You're not passing in the desert because it's so dusty. You can't see the guy. So unless you're risking it and flat footing and racing in desert blind, you're not passing somebody. So they pass in the rocks, which is, that's a different concept to me. Right. So anyways, it was the last section that we got to see before they would go into the desert. They would break down through there. They'd pass through there. But it was beautiful viewing because you got to see so much. Yeah, we climbed kind of all the way up to the top of the mountain area there so we could see the whole pass. And I think the coolest thing was we were there when the leaders came through to finish the big race. And there were, of course, the vehicles coming through the pass. But then we also had the helicopters that were flying overhead to just get that aerial footage of them finishing. That was a really cool way, I think, to conclude that race. Yeah, just the full grand scale experience of it. You, you see for miles coming from desert to rock to desert again, having the chase helicopters above you filming it all, watching all the the leaders kind of battle it, battle it out. And it was a close finish, too, from what I, from what I remember. Um, but yeah, that was it was cool just to see all the fans, all the people, where they go, what they do, and you know who chooses what areas to kind of camp out and grill out or whatever they're doing. So, yeah. And we had a little bit of fun outside of the races too. They had some pop-up breweries, we played bags. Yeah, that was neat. The, the biggest thing that people always talked about when we were there, they're like, this is like the burning man of off-road racing. And legitimately it is. You're in the middle of a desert, you have pop-up breweries, you have like, high-end restaurant that popped up there was like a tavern or pub that was set up you like it was crazy and that was just part of it and then you'd go into Hammertown where everybody was staying and that's where all the vendors and then other food places were the best tacos ever yes. too so yeah that was amazing oh god <laughs> i have to ask what was your favorite thing from the trip Oh, that's a hard one. Favorite thing from the trip, I would say just being able to race on that track and represent the Midwest and the pro spec. That and to represent Nexon, being being out there, you know, with Nexon helping us get out there to be able to properly represent them, you know. Would it be cool if I got first? Yeah, but 
I mean, technically I did in the pros back, <laughs> but um, I think it was a it was a good representation for next entire, and it really showed the versatility of the ATXs. What about you? I mean, it was really cool when you podiumed, but it was even cooler when our buddy Josh Felix took me for a ride in his class 11 in the desert. And I told Chris, I came back and I was like, I had to stop smiling with my teeth because I was getting so much sand in my mouth. Yep, yep. <laughs> so that was my favorite part. So yeah, shout out to Fast Felix for Thanks, that one. <laughs> our trip home, uneventful, which Thankfully. is exactly what we wanted. We got home before all the snow hit that you see around us now. So RV is all packed up for the rest of the winter and we'll be digging it back out for our race season. Yeah, so we have some cool things coming up. We'll probably release some videos on it, hopefully shortly here. Thank you everybody for following along and coming with us on this ride. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and, and hit the notification bell on here. Okay, thanks, bye. Bye. <laughs>